Hello and welcome to the Future of Hidden Movie Gems podcast. I'm your host, Ty Spiker Christensen. You must survive. You must survive. We've got Jordan Christensen on the pod. Oh, kind of like Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible. <laughs> and we've got Cameron Mickle on the pod. I don't see what that has to do with me. And we've got Grant Mickle. I just survived by some miracle. Please subscribe. <laughs> 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 see oh great yes yeah, see i love stuff like that like the poster so the selfie funny. stick with the zombies below yeah. i was i was hoping this movie would be a little bit more like yes that, all that was part, that was going into my nitpick i'm like if they make a sequel to this it should just be like that scene when the guy Ball falls blown. off the cliff yes they should just have tons see like he's scrolling through and you just see tons of shorts like i think that would be so much fun like that's actually what i thought this was gonna be like him scrolling through all these different like hashtag you know and then just seeing like people getting like doing pranks and stuff and like end up getting eaten by zombies and crap like that would yeah. be great i will <laughs> say this is like a very timely movie though i mean this came out in 2020 which still blows my mind that they had a movie like this that addresses being a shut-in zoom relationships or like long distance relationships over via zoom or walkie talkie essentially like the zoom uh even without the internet but like at the isolation that a lot of people felt with the, the lockdowns with COVID. And not everything. having enough food. That was so accurate. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, like toilet paper, you know, I guess for us in the U.S. I guess in South Korea it was food. But here, people might have not had something to wipe their butts with, you know. Like, could you imagine? <laughs> it's just, I, I know Korea, you know, they dealt with their own issues. But we had them here, too. You no, know? but Ty, My there was goodness. runs on food, like, for a whole month. It was like... When we got to the store, all the good food went out, and all was the nasty cans oh, yeah. of food. No, it, there's still supply chain issues right now. Now, again, first world problems here, folks. But meat costs like you know seven bucks a pound or whatever, depending on the meat you're buying. It's crazy. No, it's just insane. Yeah, right at, at Jimmy John's at my work, what's it called? We had we had to have chips in like a couple of weeks. Dude, it's crazy, man. Damn. And again, it's like it, this is just like the beginning. Like everyone, buckle up, <laughs> as as uh, as my uh, favorite Italian actor would say, fasten your seatbelts. Spider-Man 2. Okay, everybody get ready because uh, we got some crazy things coming our way because we're da- we're talking about Hashtag Alive. This movie came out in 2020, very timely. I don't know how they made a movie like this in 2020 so quickly. Like, I don't know if this was in the wings and they had this movie ready to go, but it's just so a zombified. Accurate it had to have been written, on. though, before yeah. COVID, or do you think the, they wrote it during COVID? Because I think it's possible they rushed it or they selected it to come out as soon as they realized what was going to going on. They were like, oh, rush this movie because like this is very prevalent. But I'm still blown away because they, they got all of the, like I said, the Zooming relationship that everyone had. Like, that was so spot on. I was like, yeah, that's that's our lives now. Like, and kids growing up, that's like what dating is. Like, I just got to get to know you through Zoom first before we can meet in person because <laughs> you might have COVID, you know? You might you might get me the sniffles. So I think I'll just virtually date you for a while. And then maybe if I trust you enough, we'll meet in person. It's crazy. But uh, did guys, you, this movie... Did you uh, think of it all, Ty? Did you think of Swiss Army Man when he was hanging himself? I did. And then, like, finding out there was somebody else there that was very reminiscent of Swiss Army Man. And then it was also very reminiscent of 28 Days Later yeah. when they're nearly about to die and then someone lets him into their apartment. It made me think of Mad-Eye Moody's character. <laughs> I know he's not Mad-Eye Moody. I got Harry Potter yes, in my brain. Yes, I, I knew totally Harry thought Potter about game. that, yeah. Yeah, right? He's like, oh, come on into my apartment. And they're like, oh, good. Like, or, or, you know, he's going to save us from the zombies. <laughs> and then and 28 Days Later, it was the positive pr- the person that saves you in this one it's uh it's probably one of my favorite movie <laughs> characters since second to train to busan the train conductor guy th- he reminds me of that a little bit and also from the walking dead there's the finale where you're with uh, clementine the guy who kidnaps clementine who had the winnebago who you rob or don't rob great reveal that character that's what he reminded me of i was just so glad he wasn't a cannibal i was so worried i'm like oh my gosh he's gonna eat them <laughs> <laughs> well it wasn't like it wasn't like what was happening was much or wasn't any worse i mean his wife he was him to his wife <laughs> he's gonna feed yeah, it to he's, his but he's kind of like wife. the governor isn't that what the governor did grant like he fed people to his daughter uh i don't oh, they never show the that dead? it could be in the, oh. the comic book but not in the show either way she was chained up and he was like stroking her hair and her hair's falling out yeah he like, like brushes oh. it and it comes out <laughs> comes out it's so gross so gross just uh, put a little glue on it yeah and it it wasn't enough that he wasn't jordan he wasn't feeding but he did have a fish tank of like all the severed heads of the people that he he just stares at him he stares at at his fallen enemies all their severed heads and fish tanks and uh, all around his room dude he sits in an easy chair watching them all it's the most insane thing hey if you don't got television i mean (laughs) next best thing Oh my gosh. Guys, we're discussing this movie. It was directed by 
Okay. Don't know how to say this name. It looks like Il Cho. It's like Cho? I L, but Mi it looks like Cho? the second Cho. It's Il Cho, I think. He did the screenplay. It stars Yu Ah In, Park Sin Hai, Jeon Bae So. And I'm not going to do any more because I can't pronounce any of these names. Jeff Bezos' Guys, brother. This, wait, wait, question. Jeff Bezos? <laughs> this looks like Jeff Bezos. John Bezos? That's how they say Jeff Bezos in the Korean, dude. Oh, my wait, gosh. Wait, question. So was the, yeah. the guy that he let in in the very beginning, was that the same? It looks a lot like the same guy in Squid Grant, Game. don't say it. It's not, though. Okay. I know. It does look like him. Do, I thought it was for no, a second. He, but he totally looks like a younger version of him. <laughs> does he, Grant? Or do you just saying oh that? Oh, my gosh. Asians don't Racist. look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I gotta say one of my favorite parts though in a Jackie Chan movie was to see uh, one of the guys they got him handcuffed and he's like, "What did this American look like?" And he's like, "I don't know. All you Americans look the same." <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, That's dude. Hilarious. I know, dude. It's so great. I I love it. I I this movie, guys. We gotta talk about this movie. Okay, so let's go around. What was it like watching this movie for the first time? We were watching it for the podcast. Just a quick plot recap. If any of you haven't watched it, it was the rapid spread of an unknown infection has left an entire city in an ungovernable chaos. But one survivor remains alive in isolation. It is it is his story. So Jordan, what was it like watching it for the first time? We're watching it for the podcast. So I watched this a year ago when it first hit Netflix, and I was like, oh my gosh! And I, I kept it on my list to talk about on this pod forever. You didn't tell us about it uh, stingy. I, he did tell me uh, yeah but i didn't get around to watching it stingy. well because i <laughs> i knew if i i put it on the pod then it would force you guys to watch it so it it's like <laughs> the thing is a year ago uh, we talked about train to busan and this film like i really like it, it it's just it's not quite that caliber you know because train to busan is like holy crap this is amazing this one is really good and very character driven but i i would say it's maybe more b category right or do you th- would you count it a b movie or do you think it's a listing i don't know i almost like this better than train to busan really, really? Oh, i oh. knew you would cameron i knew you would because this this is the right. gen zer train to busan jordan and i the train to busan is millennial oh does that make sense like this movie encapsulated so many things that I think of. I thought about Cameron so many times in this movie. <laughs> oh, I know really? That's crazy. Yes, I thought of Cameron with the protagonist. I, I kept thinking of you, Cam. I don't know if you saw yourself with the protagonist much, Cameron. But oh, when he's listening character. to music and he's just rocking out, dude. Yeah, when he's <laughs> drinking and he's just like, yeah, it's like, yeah. just like, like. I made me think of Cameron. That does like, make me think of Cameron, the yeah. F the everything. They're not, like, they tell me to be safe. He's out of food. He's just drinking. He's like, this is... That just I almost think. started like, thinking of The Lighthouse when he was drinking a lot. I'm like, oh, no, was he going to go insane? He literally basically was. He started hallucinating his family had come home. <laughs> Which yeah. reminded yeah. me yeah. another 28 days later when he's, yeah. when he's home and he's looking... And he's like, it's empty. And he sees the orange juice and then he's seeing his fa- family and then they come crashing through the windows. I think there was a lot of homage to 28 Days because there was a lot of similarities. And uh, again, not as many homages as I probably would have shot. But again, just the fast running zombies, Train to Busan, 28 Days, like always, always an homage. Because you that is always a creative choice, right? You're like, do you make slow meandering, slow moving zombies or do you make the adrenaline rage angry? But I got to say, I, I'm really excited to talk about this movie because I think it's... Uh, really really good so how about you grant what was like watching it for the first time rewatching it for the pod uh so I, I, th- I saw this for the first time today and it's it's definitely like it's a lot different than you would expect and i like that it took a different route than the most like zombie movies usually take or at least that it like you said it feels like more a much more like th- this is what would it, it would be like if it happened today you know just like a lot of the the social media and if you weren't Brad Pitt and you weren't a trained sniper <laughs> and you didn't exactly. have military connections like yes. this is this is what you would do as right. a video gamer you're like yeah I have a few thousand subscribers you know that watch mm-hmm. my channel but but like at the end of the day I don't have any marksman skills I don't have any weapons I don't right. have stockpiled a bunch of food like yeah. all I have are these like donuts and Funyuns and like, I love he's playing video die. games up until finally the internet gives out yeah, yeah. I know <laughs> exactly. I know. that was the most I totally... realistic the most realistic <laughs> thing was when he was more upset about his internet going going out than his neighbor across the hall getting beaten to death outside his door like okay. he's like oh i can't believe this happened like that is so accurate it was so accurate yeah, yeah. oh i love it so i just i just great. feel like it definitely fit today's like the type of people yep. that what they would do in a zombie apocalypse so i enjoyed that oh, yeah. a lot great how about you cameron yeah I, th- I thought um 
it kind of reminded me a little bit of Mitchell's the Machine, like the Wi-Fi God or whatever. I kind of yeah. <laughs> so I kind of thought of, and I just feel like it's so true. Like the moment the Wi-Fi goes out is when everyone turns into like a real survivalist. But until that point, yep. it's like, eh, like there might be chaos outside, but at least I'm safe inside my home. I could just play video yeah, games, video, dude. Yeah. yeah, don't even need to go outside. Exactly. But yeah, so I think my favorite, like my first favorite thing, is just the fact that he. I love his relationship with the girl. At first, I was kind of like, wow, what are the chances that it was, like, another attractive girl, like, his, like, <laughs> same-ish age. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, I mean, out of the entire building, like, there's got to be at least one or two, you know, that, like, survive. So that, I was like, okay, that's, like, more believable when I thought about it. And I just loved their relationship. I thought it was super fun and kind of quirky where she was just like, he's such an idiot. Just watching him and him <laughs> doing, like, his, like, hand signals. And, and I love just kind of like you guys mentioned with the Swiss Army Man, his first interaction with her is him hanging himself. And I thought I was like, I, I thought I was like, like SEAL Team Six or whatever with that red dot. And he's like, oh fuck! I know. I thought because he gets shot earlier in the movie through the window. But yeah. I guess, I guess it was just the lady like misfired or something, like shot it up in the air. Well, did she misfire or did she see the zombie walking up to the window and she panicked and fired because she saw movement? Or do you think it was just a misfire? I don't, I don't know. know. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. And that's why it's weird, because then I saw the laser, I was like, he's being sniped right I know, I'm now. like, someone's about to kill him, like, how does he prove he's not a zombie? I know. And he's, like, trying uh, to kill himself, and he's like, oh, wait, no! <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it sounds, mm-hmm. yeah, but I love that dark humor. Failed suicide attempt, <laughs> like, Better Off Dead yes, did it originally, yes. where, like, where he's in the doing? garage ready to kill himself, open. and then he's like, wait, I haven't been anywhere, I haven't been to Paris, I gotta think about that. And then the bomb comes in to vacuum the garage and knocks him off the, the garage steps. Um, love that scene. I loved uh, Swiss Army Man, he's ready to kill himself, and then he's like, wait, wait like, 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 wait, like, there's someone that's on the shore, and he's like, oh, wait. <laughs> they start choking. I love that humor. Like, I have such an effed up sense of humor, but I love that. And then this one was great, too. He's like, consigned to kill himself, and then he sees the laser pointer, and he's like, wait, I got <laughs> <laughs> I got something to live for. Like, it's that moment, like, in um, The Mist, where That's it's like, oh my gosh, like, thinking. we have a moment to super dark and bleak. But, like, right before we do this thing, maybe just call out and see if the military is just two seconds and away. And this movie like, has two moments like that. He he almost shot her a second time. Oh my yeah. gosh, yes. Cameron, how about you, man? What was it like watching it for the first time or watching it for the pod? Oh, yeah. So watching, for, so, watching it for the pod was my first time. And, yeah, it was just super wild. I was just very impressed with kind of the fun and I was joking with Jordan before the pod that I was like for 30 minutes I was like is this a rom-com like I totally forgot the zombies were in this movie <laughs> just like their interactions <laughs> and I just thought they just did a really good job of kind of like I feel like it was pretty good pacing like it, I, for a second there I was almost like oh, almost a little too slow but they like sliced in pieces where I was like it was fun enough because I feel like that's the thing World War Z and movies like that they focus too much on having the zombies to where it almost just gets to where it's like well, you know they're going to get away from them because it's like the movie has to keep going. So it's like how many times can you escape from zombies like by like the bare clutches? And almost comical because like like they're this is wave of way too fast moving where they're and just like falling over each other yeah. just like <laughs> just <laughs> climbing up the side of the Israel wall. It just again, you know, it did. Yeah, like you said, it was just a thrill ride. Like the airplane scene I think was really fun in World War Z and I wanted more of that. But yeah, it's almost comical with just like the amount, the sheer volume. And so this one, and I think a lot of the other zombie movies do a really good job at that. Like keeping it grounded, the state of panic, the outbreak initial, all that stuff I think is really well done. I like that. Yeah, they got some great intense moments. Like when that, that fireman zombie was climbing up the wall. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it uh, knocks her out. Like, that was so great. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I liked it. I, I See, and that was the other thing, too. So watching this movie, yeah, I, I similarly, too, was recommended this movie. When I saw the poster, I was like, that looks like my kind of movie. And I accidentally I thought, it, thought, but the photo, it looks like him taking a selfie. It does. And and that's where I want to say is Miss Parker, because it almost looks like he's smiling, right? Yeah. Or is he smiling? It, well, it kind of looks like he's Maybe like, not. Maybe he just looks like he's like, oh, I'm trying to get the good shot. Yeah. But in the end, you actually find out he's actually trying to get a signal for FM radio so he can, like, I'm like, so it's a survivalist thing. And I almost wish technically, because because there were moments of that where like, right, like his neighbor's been beaten to death outside his door. There's blood trickling under. But then he's like, goes back to playing video games. And I love that. <laughs> like, I'm like, what else would you do? Like, I guess you're just like, you're just like, OK, I'm just I, what else am I going to do? Locked in my apartment. I'm just going to play video games. Numb, numb everything out. And I'm like, there's probably other people around the world that are doing the same thing that he's doing because he's playing online with other people. All of them had the same idea. Like yeah. everyone's aware of the outbreak. The people on on the the video games in the beginning like whoa check out your tv it's like a movie because 
basically they're saying like they're saying that there's like a worldwide thing where people are attacking each other and the shiz has hit the fan and so like the video gamers that he was playing with they also knew that it was but they're all playing video games too like <laughs> all the people like he, he when he sends out the sos it was like here's my address come help me like he's he's sending it to the people that he knows online these are all complete strangers he's gonna post his address and like come help me like i'm locked here in my place i'm like you're sending your information out to the internet like again like it was very realistic in the world and like and with the resources that they had as like a young gen zer i really believed it and maybe, maybe he's a little older i don't know but i kind of get the gen z vibe you know like that age group just with the hair color and everything yeah that you hair. Know, Ian is probably like my age but but uh yeah, as, as, as he's portrayed, it almost seems like he's just out of high school, maybe just starting university or something like that, you know? I don't know if they say how old he is, but he was born in 86. Yeah, so he's older than I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it's funny to see him with that, with that hair. He could have fooled me, you know? He just seemed like, a, <laughs> you know, just out of high school kind of guy, so. But yeah, lots of fun watching it. And yeah, I got major Train to Busan vibes 28 Days Later and, uh, and uh, you know, all the other uh, zombie movies that we've talked about so far. A little bit of Shaun of the Dead, you know? Again, very, very good, and I love the poster but i i almost feel like one of my nitpicks and i'll just say briefly was just i was hoping that there would be a little bit more satire because there's this classic image of where he's on the balcony with a selfie stick with the phone and he has all these zombies on the balcony below him and it looks like what he's trying to do is get a good selfie with him and the zombies in the picture that's what it looks like yeah but in the end, it turns out it was just for survival. There weren't zombies beneath him, actually. They were just outside. But he's actually just trying to get a signal, uh, FFFM, so he can, like, reach the outside world. So, again, I'm just saying the poster made me think, Very like, deceitful, it, it, yeah. it, I love the idea of, like, Instagrammers being, like, they're using the zombie apocalypse to get subscribers, <laughs> to up viewership. Like, I love that. Like, yeah. That's like, why I think they should a make simple... a sequel. I oh, totally. They should, and I think they it even be a satire. into the satire. Yeah, because again, they're, at the beginning, even the other guy that was doing the thing from the window, he fell, but I didn't see the zombie. Like, I would have been great if they had made that reference where he's like, there's zombies beneath me, and he's trying to get like a better shot for the Instagram filter and he actually risked at his life of doing Because guys, this has actually happened in real life. I looked up stories. There have been Instagrammers and like parkour people or whatever on the internet they try to do these dangerous yeah. stunts for viewership and they die like there's real life consequences to this chase for fame they've also had uh they've, famously they've had um, people die playing pokemon go that's why they like the first <laughs> that, that's why they, that's a, they that's... wandered into like a nuclear power plant for a <laughs> pikachu or whatever like i love it dude they're like oh there's a friend pokemon around there it's like yeah, it's a nuclear no, reactor no, exactly. like, but it's a lapras they, how often do these come around dude? they fell off a cliff they fell off a cliff oh because they weren't looking where yeah, they're going Walking uh, and really. trying to follow it, and then they fell off a cliff, and that's why they like Pokemon <laughs> Go. Like that week after, <laughs> put out like every single time you log on, it has to say like be aware, make sure to be aware of your surroundings. You have to press like okay, check your surroundings. That way they're not liable. Oh my gosh, I love the idea. They're like Pokemon Go is healthy. I'm getting my exercise. Ah! <laughs> it's a healthy option. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, like I said, at their own expense, that's a real thing that has happened. And I almost wanted that commentary. But again, this one was a survival tactic, which I appreciated that he was being resourceful using something like a selfie stick, which was funny. You know, like it, it was life threatening and he's using a selfie stick like that. That was very funny. But again, I just wanted it harder because the poster itself shows the zombies beneath and it looks like he's just trying to get the most optimal photo. So anyway, I just I love that idea, though, and I love that premise, you know, viewership over like like oh like how can i ca like my favorite story of this was a lady went to or uh, like a tiktoker or something like that i don't know if it was a tiktoker or but like one of these sites where you get followers she literally posted a picture of her like smiling with her dead dad like i'm not kidding like it was awake at a funeral the dead dad's laying in his casket and she's just like peace you know and takes the selfie with her dead father in the background and it was like oh my father was really special to me hashtag like love love you dad like and it's like what the fuck like what's wrong with people dude like have you no ch like no shame like 100 shameless just disgusting like here's a here's like my dad is dead <laughs> he's just taking selfies with the deceased dude Ta Ta do, you, do you even know what that is that you keep quoting your friends keep saying that i'll just bleep it out like maybe don't mention that website anymore yeah no it's a it's not only for actually it's like anyone that subscribes to you <laughs> can just get access but 
Ty's I'll be like, honest, guys, most, it's okay. Like, if, <laughs> no, if you're a woman, if you're a woman, you you have it because people. But I'm just saying, like other people have. But yeah, it, it's devolved into basically, and I understand that. But I'm just saying, like this personality was like a TikTok user, or and she took a picture not with her dead father. That's my point. Is like for viewership and for sympathy or whatever attention. It's like here I am with my dead dad. <laughs> follow me on Instagram. Yeah, like, share, is. and subscribe. Like, what the fudge? Like, I want to follow people like that. Cause I'm like. How on earth, like, like, what is going on in your mind, or what is? Oh, Ty. Well, well, you think that that's okay? Like, I, I've noticed because I was trying to see like the riots or the shootings at different things that like happen in the world, and people yep. do hashtags to try to get them, and they put themselves out and try to like say like, oh, I'm so sad and stuff, and it's like they're trying to get more viewers. It's Capitalize. Like, yeah. And, and it's like, are you? Oh, seriously? I just watched the shooting outside my apartment. Uh, but please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, Seriously, that reminds me. That reminds me, of Jordan, of searching yep. when that yes. girl in her study group was like, she was not oh, a she friend was like at my all. Best friend. Oh, she was my best she friend. She was my best friend. Yeah, <laughs> you know, dude, yeah. did you watch No Way Home and Spider Man? He and Spider Man, being and Peter Parker were best friends. It's like you made it his guts. <laughs> I love that, dude. And he he still got accepted to Harvard. And he wrote a book about him. Just saying, inconsistency, folks. Um, but anyway, I just think that's really really funny. Well, Grant, what about you? What are your two favorite things? Well, so we already talked about uh the, the 21st century like modern things so i think my two favorite things would be i love the callbacks that they have like when he's like let's he's like let's do some farming like he, he calls back to the when he was doing in the video game with his friends he's like we need to do some farming before we do this raid or whatever and so like, that's when he goes out and gets resources and stuff um great you like the also, nerdy reference i wouldn't believe that one. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> It's like my knowledge of video games is gonna save my life. Someday. Well, no, that's <laughs> like, what's so funny is like, because when when he like throughout the whole movie, I just loved how they showed that he was like into like like shooting video games, but then like in real life, like he was completely terrified himself, and like you know like it's just so different when it's in real life. You're you playing know? that doesn't. You're saying that doesn't transition perfectly. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't turn into Tom Cruise because there's a zombie apocalypse outside, and just because I played hours and hours of Minecraft, I'm not a better survivalist. Well, I'm then. trying to defend the whole thing of like, oh, if you play violent video games, then you like could shoot up a school or whatever, you know. <laughs> So so Grant's like making the choice yeah. as justifying <laughs> playing video games for as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> See, it wouldn't even help me in a zombie apocalypse, so I can play as much as I want. Let's be exactly. fair, though. Jordan, Jordan, as the member that was the most savagely attacked from mom and dad, because they're like, Jordan, we're afraid that you might murder us. He's like, don't give me the video games, and I will. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch me. See what happens if you stifle me and don't allow me to play video games. I have no outlet. I'm going to murder you. Love you, mom and dad. Didn't happen. Yeah. Everyone's okay. We all made it out of the house okay. We're all fine. But then I love kids too, are all right. Like another callback was like they did a show don't tell of like the guy that he let into his room. He talked about his brother, and then later he like starts looking for one of the guys. So like there was just a lot of callbacks throughout the movie that I really enjoyed. And then I would just say the main character is probably my second favorite thing. Like. Just the expressions that he has, like when he finds the Nutella, he's just like so overjoyed. Dude, and then his, like he face, almost died over it. <laughs> his face yeah, and facial like and noises he makes when he's eating also reminded me of me. It was just a mm. uh, <laughs> Yes. Dude, like, when he eats when those spam, noodles yeah. that they watch the commercial for the spam. Oh that yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's like <laughs> it's like so over the top. But again, he had been starving, so I yeah. liked it, but it was just so And so I love like it. it. It says last supper and he lasted like what it was a day five or ten. Yeah, <laughs> day five or ten. And he's like, oh, look, it's like this is my last supper. Yeah. So funny. So it just goes for it, dude. And then like Those I love when like he wanted the spam. It, it's just like, is it everything in cream? It's like da 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 spam. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. That's good. Yeah, I just love, love the main it. character. So. Yep. Great performance. Very compelling. Cameron, how about you? Two of your favorite things? Yeah, so I already mentioned my favorite thing is just their relationship. And then I think my um, second favorite thing was just kind of, I loved his like survival tactics of like wrapping the stuff around his shoes. And I thought that like... I loved his, like, sneaking around the building. I thought that was some of the most fun scenes was just him, like, sneaking around the building, trying to be discreet. And, like, the zombie with, like, the bludged out eyes, and you're just like, oh, fudge, don't fetch and move or make any noise because I'm over <laughs> you. But, yeah, I just, I just thought those were, like, the best scenes because it was just so, like, I was, I can't, you know when you catch yourself, like, not being able to sit still or whatever because like the scene's so intense i caught myself doing that like a couple times during this movie i was like oh snap this has really got me on the edge of my seat <laughs> oh 
<laughs> I love it. <laughs> Jordan, how about you? Two of your favorite things. Oh, jeez. Uh, there's so many reasons I love this. Like, obviously, I'm oh, like, geez. I, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I love zombie movies so much. And so, like, this, as far as zombie movies go, it's so good. Like, I think people might like it even if they aren't a fan of zombie movies. I don't know. Cameron's not a yeah, fan. Yeah, it's, 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 it's better than every single zombie movie ever. <laughs> 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 Except for Train to Busan and 20 Days Later. I think it's right up there. Like, I, I would put it in the top 10 zombie movies I've seen, probably. Yeah, I agree. I, I think yeah, it's up and there. And I think uh, they do a really good job. They keep the zombie parts very PG-13 for the most part of, like, you don't really see them ripping them apart. You can, like, you see their mouth on their, like, or their, the back of their head on their neck, and you can assume, but... I might disagree with you there just by the fact that one of them is seen, like, coupling intestines and his fans and his really? I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, what's his face? The guy outside the hallway, or, uh, it's one of the ones where he sees in the hallway. It's right outside his apartment. He's, like, he's literally, like, rifling through, uh, it's oh, the... Oh, yeah, you're right, yeah. you're right. It's right when he walks down to the edge of the hallway, and he's, like... Yep. <sighs> Yeah, he's like well, eating, and then he reaches for his foot. Right? Yeah. That guy, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah but besides oh. that, I feel like it's pretty. But yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Like, but like, you didn't see someone getting torn apart. That, yeah, because usually, like, that it happens, most but zombie it was movies the are very gruesome, and like, especially yeah. for people who yeah. don't like gore, it's like it's hard. It's a hard watch. This movie is a pretty. Easy I would also watch. argue though, like, it's really disturbing watching him transition. They did the same thing with Trinity Busan, where it's the twitchy that transition of the first guy contortion. Like, yeah. it, it literally takes contortions that I hate, like from exorcism movies, where they're like they're like contorting their body and flipping all over the place and then their eyes just fill with blood it's it's pretty horrific to watch yeah. i'm just saying like i get what you're saying though cameron but like i'm just saying like we've seen enough zombie movies and we're kind of all desensitized here on the pod because i'm like <laughs> thinking back on it like i wouldn't even show my wife this movie because it would be pretty uh pretty messed up i think it'd be a little too harsh for for someone like her to watch it because yeah okay maybe it's def- it's a definite watch with the boys yeah. but maybe the women yeah. and children maybe stay at home yeah shelter the women <laughs> i don't think you should see the scary parts <laughs> women are too weak they're fans of this. like The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Women, yeah. Can, yeah. women can, yeah, no. can like zombie movies. I'm not saying that, but. <laughs> 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 I'm not advocating that women can't like zombies. Okay, that's fine. Cameron just wouldn't marry one that did. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't. I'm sure. I really wouldn't. <laughs> and then I'm all about like how people go about surviving, and so just his circumstance and his character, I love because it's it's such a fun, different take. I feel like on the zombie survival because it's so fun to see like a kid in that age, like how he would go about it. And he's like, the girl kept saying, well, what an idiot. Like he just, <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't seem like a type of kid that could survive in this. That's why most zombie movies, if you watch most any of them, they usually all the characters end up dying in the end. So watching this was kind of a surprise at the ending. I was kind of a little bit bummed. I felt like it was kind of a deus ex machina that the helicopter came out of nowhere and they didn't hear it earlier. Yeah. It was just kind of like, all of a sudden it was like, uh, all of a sudden it was there. It was like, <laughs> oh, we're sad. Because like, the they go to the edge and, and it looks like they even look down yeah they looked like, over like, the edge well we're and dead. they're like we're dead and all of a sudden it's like <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's just like I mean, it's just like jurassic park chopper. jordan where the t-rex comes in unnoticed and even though yeah good point earthquake shake every single time you'd step right and then it's right, like right. huzzah sneaky t-rex, <laughs> Ninja t-rex. <laughs> what where the fudge did you come from hey guys oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> it was just like it's tiptoeing <laughs> yeah he didn't want to yeah, wake his neighbors really apparently or something and unfortunately army of the dead kind of ruined the whole helicopter showing up, you know, but I just, ugh, made me roll my eyes. Do you remember that tie from Army of the Dead when the helicopter shows up and you're like, oh, brother. Well, yeah, beca- but it was so she bad because the, helico- yeah, the helicopter pilot was trying to fix the helicopter the whole movie and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, she left without us and then she's like, nope, I'm right here. It's like... And how did you not hear the helicopter? <laughs> they're loud. Yeah. yeah oh, like, you have to yell. My gosh. Yeah, they're freaking loud. Yeah, to show our class and privilege, we've all ridden in a helicopter here, right? I have. Yeah. Have you guys? Oh, oh, sorry. It was just a privilege for us older boys. Uh, you didn't get it going because <laughs> yeah, you were, just you were a baby. Yeah, you were with dad in the helicopter vomiting next yeah, to us. Yeah, dad was vomiting next to us. So I was like, what, <laughs> what a great luxury. What a privilege we have to have my dad throwing up next to me the whole ride. And uh, anyway, so that was really funny. But um, I think he filled up two of those bags too. <laughs> <laughs> They're all sloshing around. Dude, because the helicopter guy's like, hey, let's have a fun ride. And it was just like sloshing around in the bag. Like, Spilling all over time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of ruined that experience for me. But uh, with that being said helicopters are fetching loud yeah and it's so, just funny the idea that like you wouldn't hear it just outside the building like it the whole like have you ever heard a helicopter flying overhead yeah you can hear them miles away yeah so the idea that it's like over the side of the building again 
for the movie purposes, the zombies were yelling in that moment. They didn't hear it. That's fine. The but audience they, wasn't privy to they, it. Well, they wanted but us to is, be like, oh, no, it's over. And then... Yeah. Oh, no, I've given up despair. I'm fine doing the, the World War Z thing where it's just run to the helicopter. I'm going to get tackled yes. on the rooftop before I get there. That's more intense than enough. They, those zombies were going way too slow. Yes. It seemed like they kept going back a little bit, got back a little bit. Like... Yeah, they were like, yeah, running at them. And they were like slow-mo shots where they're like, flip. And it's great makeup work, I'm saying. And those yeah. actors all playing zombies awesome but yeah the the idea that they kept approaching and then, then they just started shooting them all and then like waited to shoot most of them before they let him get on i'm like just get him on the plane you can now, save your ammunition to get the two people you know out of what, there like been hilarious is if because i thought they were gonna both jump imagine they just jump they just get chopped up by the helicopter boys <laughs> <laughs> just jump. helicopter's like hey there's survivors on the rooftop let's get up there let's let's try close enough to the building and then go straight up rather than like i don't know go like perpendicular to the building and fly straight toward the rooftop instead let's fly low to the ground where a zombie could like latch itself onto the helicopter Helicopter and take us out like uh, I am legend style. Yeah. But no, it's like let, let's fly low to the ground, then zoom up the side of the building, like <laughs> to catch any human straggling. To catch anyone jump. that's jumping off the roof into our propeller blades. It's insane. It's insane. Speaking of falling over the side into the chopper blade, I love when the kid jumps over the Don't side. Don't say San Andreas where he turns the helicopter on its side and catches the people falling. Because <laughs> my goodness, <laughs> no, you no. still Jumanji, like that movie, Jumanji, San Andreas. Jumanji, I can't handle that movie. Jumanji does that too. Dude, yeah, I know they turn the helicopter on their side. And they fall, fall in and catch yeah. so no, 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 no. I was thinking of... <laughs> so ridiculous. What, no, 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 no. Well, they do that in 28 weeks later when he, like, chops them up with the helicopter blades, you know, he chops up the yeah. zombies. Yeah, and remember how well that turned out for the helicopter pilot. Yeah, that, it's right, he um, No, this <laughs> he one... He hit them up and they, then goes down. <laughs> as it would. Yeah, no, but I love when the kid's standing by the rails and then the big, chunky zombie comes chasing after him. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And then he jumps over the side and then it falls with over. With the fridge, dude? He's, like, pushing the fridge out of the way? Oh, my gosh. Speaking... Did he have two fridges? Because I noticed there was one in the room, and then he pushed one up against the door. So I'm guessing he had that, too. Oh. I didn't, I didn't catch the two. I don't remember. I guess... I don't know if that was a nitpick or if it was like, oh, does he have two? Like, I just thought I it was... I remember the one in the room. I remember the one by the door that he used. I yeah, but if you look closely, fridge. there's one in the li in the living room as well. Like a mini fridge? Or was it, like, two big fridges? No, it was, it was two big fridges. Maybe it was a freezer. Dude, Koreans are wealthy people, man. I didn't know they were doing that well. <laughs> I just, I thought, I didn't know if that was a nitpick, if they that was a mistake, and they're like, oh crap, we got that first Well, the guy shot. still only had Funyuns and Cheeto Puffs to, like, live on. Like, the poor guy's like, oh, I should have gone grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's, it's so funny. Yeah, I love it too. How <laughs> so see true. that's a, kind of going on a grand thing. I think they did a great job of show. Don't tell with the family relationship. You don't need to spend mm. the first ten minutes of the movie showing that it's a dysfunctional relationship. Like, and that mm. he's just kind of like, like I love just the nitpicks. Like, oh, sorry, mom, you're right. I was like, sorry, mom, I should have gone get gotten the stuff. And you also just see like just the quick flashbacks of just him and his family. You could tell that like there's a reason why he's not like with the family and he's like not super close with them. Yeah, you learn so much about his character throughout the film. It it's, it's so perfect yeah. and really yeah. early on too just the fact that he you know put off put getting groceries and played video games instead it's just such a teenager sounds know? like yeah. Grant yeah. what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say my two favorite things is I love I love zombie tropes when they're done really well but I also love any topic and conversation about zombies and the zombie lore and adding to zombies so this is one of my favorite ones in the zombie verse in the zombie verse yeah all things zombies so I actually, actually enjoy... thought about that did you think this could have been connected to the train Busan because they're like the zombies are coming from Seoul I'm like oh is this like I mean maybe, maybe but to be fair like Seoul is like one of their biggest cities with the biggest population so i can understand why they'd say that like it's like it's like saying oh they're coming from los angeles or california like our or new york <laughs> state or like new york yeah like new york city or or you know but i get what you're saying or like chicago like a big populated city but yeah i mean it's possible i love the idea that it could be in the same universe because the zombies all behaved very similarly wait did anyone see, did anyone see the new train to busan the only one was different was the eyes of the blood i don't remember that in train to busan or is that just a trailer jordan that i saw for the new train to busan oh peninsula yeah it's it's not great. Bummer. Yeah. It seemed interesting though. I, I, I almost wanted to watch it. I just think Jordan had too high I enjoyed high it. I just, I'd be yeah. curious to have to hear you guys' thoughts. I, I don't know. I, After watching I, this, I'm in the mood for more zombies. And the reason I, I actually, I'm glad we're talking about this. So this is one of the first few zombie movies that I recall, other than they did this a little bit in Army of the Dead, but not, they didn't do it well. In fact, Nothing that movie did, anyway. <laughs> um, but but uh, not even a good use of Dave Bautista. What a what a tragic, oh, what a that tragic. Movie was such garbage. Um, but 
what was really funny is I love the idea that the zombies would attack their own. Now, that's something I actually can't yeah. think of. Other than, like, I mentioned Army of the Dead, where the big zombie, like, hurts some of the other ones, I think. Or he, he's just, I can't remember. La story. Land of the Dead, the, one of the zombies saw one of the zombies suffering because it was on fire, so he shot it. Shot it. That is interesting. See? But again, that was, like, an empathetic move where it's like, oh, do zombies feel empathy? Do they have a sense of community? But I did like what that I really in this like, one. Because I was like, this oh. this one, the zombie, he, the, the, the neighbor one. that comes in from the brother, yeah. he ends up pushing him out of his apartment because he's starting to change and he has to like fight him off right it's a great scene and then immediately after he pushes him out in the hallway this big other neighbor comes in and just wails on him yeah beats him to death and, and drags him, him away. outside his door no he doesn't die because later because remember he sees him in the hallway like broken legs well he he is dead he's turned into a zombie well, yeah but i'm saying the then the big one like beat him to a pulp afterwards yeah, yeah yeah like like the big one started attacking the other guy even though he was a zombie. zombie my point is these zombies are like desperate so if they don't get enough living flesh they'll start turning on their own and they start eating each other that's interesting and i thought that was interesting because i've never seen that in zombie movies before and i actually really liked that aspect of it because yeah. it's always like oh we only attack the living like it's like some moral ethical code like right <laughs> and i'm like whatever like they, if they if they like got so hungry they would just start eating their own and i like that i've never seen well, that i before. have seen and like, and also, I guess Land of the Dead. He was one of the zombies was eating his own arm. Like, oh, really? See, so, yeah. See, I. So, or those both George Romero? Yeah. Yeah. See, I think he he had the sense of being like, what about his like, you know, like adding more to them. Like they tried it in Army of the Dead, where it's like he and he's creating super zombies and he's smart. He wears the metal helmet. It's just like it was so this dumb. is all stupid. This is all really dumb. Like Plants vs Zombies did it better. They put buckets on their head to protect themselves <laughs> against pea shooters. Like. <laughs> It, it's not original. Like, I, everyone's like, oh, what a novel idea. It's like, this isn't new. Like, George a. Romero, again, had zombies learning, right? They could pick up guns. They could pick up Well, rocks. he was they trying could... to create a universe, remember? And then he even had, yeah. like, he had, remember that one of the zombies had, like, blue eyes? So it was, like, metal zombies. And then they talked about, like, the water zombies. I don't know. No, well, what I or like the ones... this... Are you talking about Zack Schneider again? Yeah. Or... Well, well, oh, I, I was talking about George a. Romero I... again. But yeah. Oh. He, yeah, he wanted to have a whole backstory. It just, it just fails on everything, well, I, well, And I'm sure they'll get three more movies. But... What I thought this movie also did really good was was like the fact of kind of doing the recall of like oh it's it, they re remember from their past lives that's why like that one nine one one hospital guy could climb. he was able to climb that yeah he saw he's the rope and he's like you climb up ropes yeah. he was like a fireman yeah and so I yeah, thought that was kind of that. a good cult where it's like okay that explains why some zombies will do some things that others don't because I feel like that's it's very yeah. inconsistent with certain zombies because sometimes zombies will be yeah, like smart one zombie learned to climb yeah, yeah. Like, I, I like that what you were saying Cameron yeah. Yeah. so it's like the fireman that climbs into windows to see yeah because then it gives an like, explanation because then you like actually have to know like oh this person knows how to do this because of that yeah yeah because yeah, I was surprised I like no other zombies did that I, I thought they were all going to kind of follow behind him yeah. Climbing up the wall. Yeah. And, and I, I like that, Cameron, like you said. So yeah, like the callback, I love that because it's like some part of them is still in it. See, I love those kinds of discussions. Like some of my favorite ones are like The Walking Dead where he's like, don't let me turn into a zombie because there'll be still, what I'm most fearful is there'll be some part of me that is alive in there. And that is like, yeah. what a horrific thought that you're somehow there. And even if it's like the sunken yeah. place. Yeah, I was just thinking that from uh, from uh, Get Out. But like the zombie brain or virus has taken hold of you and you like see yourself eating, but you can't help yourself. That is so horrifying. Like, so I love those kinds of morality discussions. And and again, zombies turning on each other in desperation. Love that aspect of it. Two, I love the, uh, the herd kind of thing where they're all attacking each other. Very sound. Uh, aware that it, it was weird that they said like they're not good at hearing sound and yet every time they made a sound the zombies heard it or did they say no, they, said that they, they really heightened. sound prone yeah, they said heightened, heightened. Sense okay of, of i thought they said muted for some reason i was like they seem to hear everything just fine yeah <laughs> like which, they had that, no which, problem which hearing actually, people which is actually yeah. one of my like my nitpicks was when the zombie had its eyes gouged out i don't know how it didn't smell him just because, like, it would have, like, they already have heightened sense of smell and, and hearing. And then that one was, like, right next to Do him. they have smell? I always, that's another question where I'm like, yeah, because in The Walking Dead, it's like, let's cover us in zombie guts so they can't smell us. And that's the most inconsistent thing, too. It's just like, because yeah. they'll be hiding behind something. It's like, wouldn't you be able to smell them? Like, isn't that the whole point? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. You know? Dude, don't even get me started on The Walking Dead. Yeah. But yeah, see, that's my point is, like, I like when movies try to address the rules. And I'm fine with that. Like, I will accept most, like, okay, the zombies run in this movie. Okay. 
I understand that. And in fact, while they're young and fresh zombies, I can understand that they could run. I don't understand the whole meandering thing. Like, unless they're, like, walking dead and they're, like, falling apart and mushy bone. Like, I can understand that they would lumber and walk because they're rotted, fleshed corpses that have broken, mangled bones and body parts to begin with. Like, I get that. But when they're, like, young and new, like, I understand the whole running because it's, like, they're able-bodied, you know, like a fresh new body. So and one thing I, I would argue that is inconsistent is, like, how soon do they turn into zombies when they're being feasted upon the other people? It seems pretty quick because the prison lady or the, at least the yellow jacket lady yeah. with the gun she gets dragged off and being bitten a lot and then like that night she's walking around as a zombie again i'm like she doesn't seem to be like she has a few bite marks but i'm like i guess they didn't get to feasting on her very long before she ended up turning if they're vampires they just suck out its blood that's the other thing i'm <laughs> kind of confused about because again one of them was eating intestines which again would suggest that they really like just eat everything in sight whereas Again, they turn so quickly. Is yeah, but it's not only the bite. Maybe is it's it more death realistic because in yeah. zombie movies, too many times, like they rip people open like they're nothing, like they're bread. Yeah, yeah. It's almost <laughs> like how are they tearing them apart? Yeah, Shaun of the Dead is a great. You know, it's just like fingers just pulling them apart, and it's kind of funny. But but again, like I have no idea. Like I I couldn't. I mean, I guess if I really wanted to, I could tear the flesh off my arm. But it seems crazy, right? It's like no way. But. Again, I, I don't know. It's like, d d should the Mythbusters do a thing about zombies? I would love them to tear apart a seemingly real person and see if they could tear it apart with their own flat, uh, with their own hands. I was like, a real human? I mean, seemingly real. <laughs> <laughs> they just volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling them out. It's, it's real. It's so real. <laughs> it's so real. It hurts so bad. <laughs> so yeah, I would love them to do like a zombie survival thing because, and then the other one is, does everyone turn if you die or is it just with the bite? I, I'm always curious about that conversation because in some movies it's like, oh, we all have the virus. If we die, we come back. Or if we're bitten, we come back. Because they do that in some movies where they're like, oh, I thought it was only a bite mark. I, I like when they address that. This one, I don't remember, did they say only assailants that were bitten? They said they a do bunch of mention stuff on the news. I, I wasn't really paying and attention because... We'll that's not the most interesting part to me, but I... I mean, it's not the most interesting part, but it does play a part in, okay, what is going on? yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, is, it, is this just a zombie outbreak and all the people... Because if you're fast turning, it doesn't really matter. If you've been bit, soon you turn into a zombie. And I like that, where it's like quick, you know, like World War Z, 10 seconds, right? He counts to 10 Mississippi and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm still here. Or even three seconds. No, it's 10 seconds. With the little and doll. And this one, it was pretty quick too. Like his eyes turn blood red. He starts contorting and everything really quickly. Like he comes over, he's kind of upset he's been bit and he's like oh let me just use your bathroom and he's like fine you can use my bathroom and then like on the tv it reminded me so much of shot it was almost comical he's like assailants that will become really aggressive really quickly and he's like hey maybe you should get out of the, my house and he's like I, I, i'm not leaving <laughs> it just kind of made me <laughs> laugh like the tv literally told him like yeah. it, it was that scene in shot of the dead where he's like the assailants keep your doors closed and then oh, they the look at each other and then there's a zombie <laughs> in the room like it was that comical where they're like oh yeah. we should have shut the front door like it's so well funny. that guy like, dove in like the second he <laughs> He creaked open the door. He was just like a ninja. <laughs> I know. Dude. He was like peeked out. He's like, hey, I gotta come in here. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? That's what I love. That was, that was what yeah. I quoted in the beginning when he was like, he's like, my brother just got like turned into this effect of He's like, what does that have to do with me? <laughs> so get out of my house. I'm sorry, I failed to see how this is my problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a Gen Z thing too. Yeah, right. Like I, I failed to see how that's my problem. <laughs> so I thought that was good. So yeah, I, there's a lot to like about it. But like I said, I, um, you know, like 20 days later, where it's like a drop of blood could get you sick. And these zombie movies, they just like cut open zombies and blood spattering everywhere, and they don't seem to gets in their mouth, it gets in their eyes, gets in their nose, gets into open cuts all the time. Yeah, when they were out and they never fighting those zombies, well, I was stressing out so much. I was too. Yeah, that was a great scene where they like literally go down and then he picks up the gun she's fighting him I love, I love when he's like he's like he's like I'll go down and and like tell you when to come down and she's like already down at the she's bottom already down at the he's bottom. like wow zips down there yeah that was awesome that was awesome. I loved her makeshift uh, booby trap with the chair legs all yeah. filed down to points. I thought that well, was really cool. Well, and the fact that her door... Great visual of her, like, reach... It. Yeah, there's, like, a chair stabbed into him, and he's like, ah, I love Well, it. and her door was broken, Ty. Did you catch that? Yeah. That's why they kept yep. coming in. Oh, that would yep. be so stressful that I your know, door doesn't work. How could you sleep? Yeah, yeah. You couldn't. His door broken, too. I like how he had a makeshift, like, wedge something in there to keep it closed. Mm -hmm. I loved all that. Like, yeah, if your deadbolt's gone. And, and that was the point where I'm like, at what point 
would you not try to at least try the neighbor next door yeah. or to try to get more food or try to get a safer room? But again, it's like, what do you do? Like all my stuff is in here. My internet, my video games, everything's in this <laughs> house. Yeah. But after all that goes, dude, I'm like, uh, anyway. So my second favorite thing is I love the scene where he snaps. I love when he gets so pissed off yeah. because he hears There's his like, family. Like, he has been holding on the hope that his family's alive somewhere and hunkering down somewhere. Stay alive. You must survive. Like his father was suggesting. Then he gets this amazing voicemail, oh, yeah. which I loved it because it reminds me, it was the second best one to, to the walking dead. There is, if you play The Walking Dead, you can play a voicemail as your character and you find out what happens to Clementine's parents. There's a bone chilling audio you hear. She's like, Clementine, I'm so sorry. Like, I hope we'll get to you soon. But you're like, uh, and then you just hear her crying on the phone. She's like, I hope we're going to be okay. It's like, dad was bitten or something like that. It's so bone chilling. And I get goosebumps just talking about it. Like, it's so good. And it's on a voicemail that was sent to Clementine. And you're like, oh my gosh, like, they're not coming back. Yeah. Her parents are gone. And, and this one did a really good job too, where it's like, oh my gosh, like, the sister clearly gets, in fact, did and you hear her contorting and yelling doing the zombie voice on the voicemail and the phone drops and I, I like that I like all of that again a great way where the character learns with you at that time that his family is no longer here and then our, our, our protagonist dude he just goes apes he gets the <laughs> golf club I think they call it a golf stick or something like that or, or I can't remember no maybe I'm thinking of a I'm thinking of something else but it, uh, Boom he takes the golf club and he just walks through and starts beating the other zombies in the hallway because he's just like he's done like a you is given up on life and, and he's just He's just like gonna go through the apartment and beating all of them, and he almost gets killed doing that. And it's crazy and how quickly like... his like survival instincts kick in. He's like, okay, I I need to be careful now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. After a while, he like beats them, and then like it's like they're all like a tons of them, and he's like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna die. Like, yeah. like the rage left him very quickly because right. he got out his aggression on like the one or two people he hit, and then he's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. Fight or flight runs back to the apartment you know nearly nearly gets eaten several times i liked all of that but i just like the moment where he snapped i thought that was really great way well, that was the second moment too i liked when he was looking outside of the window and he just started yelling at the zombies that killed that chick like yeah. he was getting so but mad in the end, i still liked it because that humanity where it's like if you're watching someone get attacked you just felt so helpless in that moment yes. i can almost understand like hey like get off of her you know like like just almost you know natural you're just like you're like stop stop this and and then in the end it like revealed this such uh, his, his location to to the big boy in the hallway with the fridge dude he's like standing in his doorway he doesn't move that and then was also, so he's just like, ah! he just like <laughs> throws the fridge aside and he's coming after him i thought that was so oh, great man. and then running out to the balcony diving down and the guy just launches after him i thought that was so funny so good again it's just really fun it's a great zombie movie. So, and then uh, my third favorite thing, I'd just say, because I'm going right into favorite things. My favorite thing in every zombie movie is the villains that aren't zombies that are more <laughs> horrifying than all the zombies combined. And I'm, of course, I'm talking about our friend at the end of the movie who yeah. feeds his zombie wife living people. I love this plot. Point. I love this. I love a guy that can't let go of his dead wife that's zombified, <laughs> and he just keeps feeding and bringing innocent victims to his wife to feed on. I fetching love this plot point in zombie movies. I love it. I, I can't get enough of it because there's nothing more delicious to me than like a horrifying human being that is more terrifying than the zombie pandemic. I love that. <laughs> like human beings are the real monsters. You know, th they did that in, you know, The Walking Dead with the governor. He's more horrifying than the monsters that, you know, that we should all fear. The military uh, guy in 28 Days Later. And Negan. Military guy in 28 Days Later. Humankind can be much uglier than the zombie. And I love that. I love those themes. I thought that was so fun. This one was fun. It reminded me of The Walking Dead where the guy carries his wife's head around in a bowling ball bag. Like, that's so great. And talks to it. So messed up. And I, dude, play The Walking Dead video game oh, at the very okay. end. Talk about mystery, He's like, man. honey. <laughs> <laughs> no, it carries the, the super. Yeah, her dad's head in a bowling ball. No, but in in The Walking Dead, dude, like he's talking to his wife. And he's you keep like, saying The Walking Dead, and I think people are assuming the TV show. You should probably yeah. clarify the video. Oh, game. I'm talking about the video game, and I think it was in the, the comic book too, right? There was it was at least the com it was at least the video game that they did it. But the guy that you take the Winnebago, he ends up like the, he comes back to haunt them, and then he's like talking to his wife, whose head is in a uh, whose severed head is zombified, like it's like <laughs> moving and breathing and like living somehow inside a bowling ball bag it's insane and you see the zipper like slightly open you just see the zombie head and they're like yeah 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 so crazy. Well, it nice. happens in dawn of the dead when they find the boat and they open up a cooler and there's a head inside it you're head just inside. like what's a live fudge? zombie head yep exactly <laughs> they're keeping it alive so they can study it it's so terrifying dude or 20 days later when they like go to the the place and there's that zombie chained up in the courtyard and it was freaking good well they're so. trying to figure out how long till it starves it out which is genius i mean it, 
I well to find out how long. A little unorthodox, but Jordan's okay with no, it. No, no, no. But how to figure out how long till they starve out? Like that's super smart because then it's like, when can we go Dude, out? Dude, keeping one of those things alive was not smart because like a second later, it vomits blood all over the courtyard. Well, I'm like, dude, if that thing coughed at you and got some spittle in your eyes, I'm just saying. Well, then I mean, you're all gone yeah, for... but I'm, obviously keep it in a place where nobody's gonna go. Where all the laundry was hanging and drying. <laughs> Jordan's like, yeah, we don't need new clean underwear. Who cares, dude? Oh, I love it, Jordan. I love it. I'm just teasing you. Jordan probably didn't have a problem with it because he was so. Oh uh, my just wanted everybody. To- <laughs> that was so dark, so quick. Yeah, I love teasing you, Jordan. Jordan's the least person. I am not podcast. associated with this podcast. Holy I find humor very funny. Sue me. Okay, so I thought it was really, really good. I hit good, narrative though, with my because- car. So, well, so what? Sue me. Actually, don't, don't sue me. Oh, actually, don't sue me. <laughs> <laughs> sue me. No, that doesn't sound right. I love the idea that he's feeding his wife, and then his wife ends up eating him as a man witch. I thought that was so great. Delicious. So funny. <laughs> so fresh. So face. So funny. And well, and it. they shot him? Like, why didn't they use their freaking knives? They got all the attention from the zombies. Gosh dang it. I know. I know. But uh, it still made for a great scene i love yeah, it i yeah. love I just, just the reveal I of like oh my gosh his wife is alive and, and chained up to the freaking sink or whatever i would, I would so have just terrifying. stomped i would have just stomped on his head like drive pull out my inner <laughs> ryan gossing <laughs> 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 or death uh, I thought you were referring I always thought you were t- yeah death I was thinking of uh, Kurt <laughs> uh, no 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 I was thinking of Brawl and Cell Block 99 oh yeah <laughs> head just implodes yeah, when oh and he drags it across, across the concrete, the concrete. yeah yep, yep. not to confuse it with the movie yeah not <laughs> Jordan loves that joke that's in Brawl and Cell Block <laughs> that that happens yeah don't forget dude I am so excited dude Robert Eagers is coming up with that movie this year uh, dude a Viking I know Robert Eagers nothing to do with Craig Zeller yeah but... I haven't seen the trailer yet but I'm I'm gonna watch it tonight the trailer trailer yeah yeah dude i saw the trailer is it drop. the same girl from witch right bbb uh anya taylor joy i believe so okay i saw an image and i was like uh it. yeah dude, i can't wait to see it dude like he is he belongs in period pieces movies just yes. keep making them dude which was amazing love lighthouse i just keep it going dude he can't can do no wrong dude scenes uh he's he's batting at oh and then right. we're excited about a new coen's brothers movie are you kidding new me? coen brothers like the what was it called the De- fortunate death of Macbeth or Macbeth, something like that yeah. Macbeth movie that would be interesting. And then uh, fun to have movies, yeah, that we're looking forward to, you know? Really looking forward to seeing all these movies So that aren't a superhero movie. Mission Impossible 7 is coming out sometime in summer. I'm really excited for. Um, Hopefully we'll get Tom Cruise yelling at some people. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a little bit of controversy. <laughs> Wear the fetching mask, okay? <laughs> Subscribe to the Zoo and Scientology, all right? Yeah, I don't know what Hopefully says, Christian but... Bale shows up and starts yelling at people, too. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we should, yeah, we should do a movie with Tom Cruise, Christian Bale, and, like, who, who are the famous, like, freak out actors? Oh, Sean Penn, too. He's, like, a great to people. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then get Daniel Day-Lewis, for good measure, doing, like, some method acting. And what's, He's what's just yelling name? at people. Oh, Jared Leto. Yeah. Jared and Leto, Jared dude. Sending up the pig heads. Actors. And also Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Alec Baldwin, because who really shoot you? <laughs> The ultimate He's probably the one I fear the most, dude. He is, uh, for, uh, let's be honest. Cruise out of all, all of them, Alex. he is the most lethal. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have this argument with you. Oh, uh, too soon? Too soon? It's it's still funny. Somebody is responsible for this. It's not me, but someone is responsible. Do you recommend this movie? Yeah. ABCs, always be shooting your ghost stars. <laughs> or, or shoot the cameraman. I, Sorry, I do. that is not funny. Everybody. Uh, oh, yeah, movies that you're looking forward to seeing. Oh, wait, would you recommend this no, movie? No, I do recommend this movie, yes. Yes. I recommend Alive. If you like the zombie genre, oh, yeah. like, it's a total jo- a zombie movie. Like, if you liked Trade of Busan, good zombie movie. Right yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend it outside of zombie lovers. Like, I don't think it has more to offer than what you'd get with, like, any other zombie film. Well, but... Maybe, like, survival, if you like survival stuff. Yeah, and... yeah, right it's, in that yeah, alley it, it, It's, like, a step above, like, gruesome-wise of, like, Love and Monsters. It's, like, kind of similar, I feel like, story story-wise, but like more gruesome. I can see that. And then I would just suggest like, if you want commentary on the depressing bleak situation in which Gen Z and younger millennials are growing up in, you know, yeah. like, I mean, it, it's a pretty good commentary on it. I feel like I, I did a good job. Like the isolation that a lot of people feel today. And, and it wasn't uh, until he lost his technology that he finally communicated with a human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So. what is that saying, yeah. right? Yeah, as soon as you get rid of the but artificial... Not before trying to kill himself. <laughs> before trying to kill himself. He's like, uh, I could go outside and meet people in real life, or I could hang myself. Why don't we just hang myself? <laughs> Jim Gaffigan. I, it reminds me of Jack Black, though, from uh, Welcome to the Jungle, Jumanji, when he was like, I, after I stopped having my phone, I feel like I'm getting smarter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
Love it. it. An interesting thing about this movie, though, is how tight the location is. Like, yes, the very claustrophobic. Like, yes. it, it was very interesting because it was very different. I'm so used apartment. to, like, Walking yeah. Dead, like, like Open field. crap hits the fan. It, like, leave where you are. Like, and, and what's really interesting is, like, I heard once that, like, in natural disasters, people tend to stay in their homes because they think that's the safest place. So I thought that was interesting that, like, in this in this movie, the people kind of stay, like, where they are, which I thought was interesting. Well, it's because it's what you know in such a chaotic situation. Right, you, right. you want familiarity. Yeah. And you might not know the Wi-Fi password of where you're going to, so... <laughs> <laughs> Very, very important that you stay put. That was great. So yeah, I, I highly recommend this movie to zombie lovers out there. It's a good zombie movie. Put it in your catalog. Yeah. Yeah, movies that you've seen. What are you looking forward to seeing, Kim? So this weekend I watched, I showed Kelsey Dark Knight, which she loved. And then nice. she actually showed me a movie, which was actually really, really good. It's called Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. It's a the it's, Ted Bundy yeah, with, uh, with Zach, Zach Efron, Efron, right? Yeah, and holy cow, it was <laughs> really good. It was good. Uh, it was a good it, movie, it right? Real, I was so creeped out. It's just so impressive. Um, right now I'm I'm kind of on the Ted Bundy binge, and so I'm watching the documentary series about it all. I don't think Ted Bundy's. Oh, yeah. I think I watched I, that I, as well. I, my only gripe is that I think Ryan Gosling is a better match, but I think I don't know if Ryan Gosling would ever do that. But he looks a little bit more like That's Ryan funny. Gosling, like with a kind of scruffy beard. But yeah, insane movie. I, it's so crazy, like how he was so normal and how there was and like I'm watching the the documentary documentary series right now and how there was like no problems in his home like he was just a normal child and then just to do these things full-blown sociopath he, he appeared so normal and friendly and charismatic and charming on the outside he was just a monster yeah, inside. And, oh my like i love the fetching the seeds where the ladies are the girls are like they're like oh i don't know if he did those things but he is dreamy i'm like what the fuck <laughs> right. oh, he's accused of literally dude. like Chopping up and abusing Cameron. girls to death. And Cameron, like, just wait. Dude, have you uh, watched, um, what is it? Oh, I can't think of the one. There... I don't know if it's bare bro it's one of the true crime podcasts. Cold? There are women that line up at the doors of like serial killers and murderers like they like they find out that they killed people and they're so driven to find a man like like i guess in their mind it's like a big like they're like oh like a man that cannibalizes his victims i'm, I'm not kidding there is a branch of women out there that start writing these men in prison they're like yeah. i will marry you if you get well, ever yeah get it was out. like that psycho chick who was like they come visit them and they have these the one who, relationships the one who ha dude imagine imagine them. just getting it's the insane. shorthand of cards from God being Ted Bundy's child. Are you fetching <laughs> kidding me? Elijah Wood tie did a movie I, I just watched with about the serial killer Ted Bundy. If if you want more stuff like that, Cameron, it's called No Man of God. No Man of God. Okay. Does does Shia what you said Elijah Wood or Elijah, Elijah Wood? Bu Elijah Wood. I was thinking Shia Buff, but either one. I, I like both of them. I'd love to see a movie where he's playing a serial killer. No, or he does, he play, he's, he's the guy he's, interviewing. He's the last the person to interview Ted Bundy before he was killed or executed. Uh, what? It wasn't that movie with James Franco and uh, Jonah Hill. I actually was it? like that one. I, uh, I actually like. True, it's okay. Yeah. What is it? True something. True, true story. True crime. True story. Yeah. Which wasn't a very exciting true story, was it? Um, I liked it. I've seen it. Should have loosely three based times on the now. facts and made it more exciting. I think in my. Opinion. I I love Jonah Hill. I do so. like Jonah Hill, and I like James Franco. And then I'm I'm just looking forward to a few things. Um, Jordan just bought Time Lapse. I want to watch that. Also, I've, I've heard really good things about King Richard. I'm kind of interested to watch that. It's with Will Smith. It talks about like Venus and Serena Williams. And then um, the one I'm really, really excited for is Possessor, which I watched a trailer with it with Jordan. I'm like, fetching good. Oh, the Possessor, uncut. Dude, that movie's insane. Yeah. There's like one scene Pretty skip, gnarly. but it's really good. Yeah, I've looked at the parent guide. Not... One scene? I think there's yeah, like eight. I looked at the parent guide and there was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to be skipping and watching this one by myself. Yeah. So. I mean, you might not even be able to watch but the violence. I, I agree. It's an amazing film. It's an amazing, insane Oh, there film. is two scenes. Okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> and then, I mean, again, without spoiling anything. And then the violent pretty, stuff yeah, is it's... really, really violent. <laughs> yeah. The scene with He's Sean the... Bean or whatever his name is. Yeah. No spoilers. I'm not going to spoil anything. It's crazy. It's true. It's not a spoiler. If, if you star Sean being in your movie if, if you watch any any cronenberg movie you're gonna expect it to be pretty horrific <laughs> Jordan's i'm just eyes. saying when sean bean horrific. sean bean is a spoiler alert though because like if you star sean bean i know movie, if, if sean bean's gonna be in your movie him, it's in his contract he's gotta be oh, also i got drew hooked on piece. game of thrones <laughs> drew's like yeah drew's already fit he's halfway through or finished season three how dare you corrupt such a good little boy <laughs> drew <laughs> so repent. good change of your ways stop watching it right now just you tell him to read the plot synopsis of season 
and eight and, and then watch it. Yeah, and just say, wow, yep, that's dumb. there you go. Exactly. I never watched Game of Thrones. And I never got disappointed. You know what's a great show that doesn't die off or, or like uh, disappoint their fans? It's always something for Breaking Bad, oh, Better Call too. Saul, a great shows, and they're amazing, and they don't disappoint. Well, we haven't seen the last season of Better Call Saul, so we don't know. Uh, dude, if they derailed that, I will be so sad. But they can't, because it's literally going to bleed into Breaking Bad. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> It's going to be Ty's so already, nostalgic to watch. Like, you set in a high bar, Ty. Dude, they're gonna, all they have to do is show Aaron Paul and Heisenberg and like one one episode. Just do like a Breaking Bad homage where it's like post out. them meeting these I two. I love you, Chief. Like a scene of the two. Oh, they Back became. In. All they have to do is show a scene where they're in Saul's office and you see bald Heisenberg and Aaron Paul and people will flip their shiz, dude. <laughs> like, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be insane. Grant, Can't what wait. about you? What have you seen lately? What are you looking forward to? What have I seen? I hope Nacho gets away, dude. I hope he does. I love Nacho. Disney Plus is Ron's Gone Wrong. That's okay. This is like, it's like, it's kind of like, it has the vibes of Mitchell's vs. Machines. But essentially it's like, this guy makes a technology that's supposed to be a best friend for everyone. And then it, it's like your phone and everything all in one. And it's supposed to like communicate with you and make friends for you or whatever. And it, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, and then they made it already. It's called Big Hero 6. -la 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 -la. It's like your friend and <laughs> he's much, your yeah. caretaker exactly. and he makes friends with you. And it's yeah. very endearing. Is this one like, like negative toward it? Or is it like a pot? Like, is that the villain, the over friendly robot? No, in your phone? Yeah, no, it never becomes a villain. It's just like, it's not like Christine or Jexy. It's like a defect and then like it shows that like the defect is like the better robot than everything else so the defect oh well, there's a defect. yeah well anyways it doesn't matter it's it's like a one-time watch or the new chucky child's play <laughs> stop trying to make chucky a thing jordan no one's watching I watched the first two episodes <laughs> <laughs> um, the book of boba fett and it's been okay i had my expectations at oh, nothing and yeah. so it's been like entertaining but is it anywhere near mandalorian or is it not even oh that no mark? not even close okay not even close. See, that, that's the thing i, I don't, I, I don't and understand that's what's so sad is yeah, like like Mendel because but that's the thing you already had everything there was to do with Boba like there's nothing you could do to well, redeem it. Well, the no. guy was so overinflated and blown up and out of proportion. It's like this guy's the coolest bad guy. The guy's like, he went out like a <laughs> in the Sarlacc pit. Okay, I'm just saying this this and, nonsense and, was like people glorified him to godlike status, and the guy is went out like a simp. Okay, <laughs> like it's so, like it so baffles me. Like the, I thought he was a cool action figure too. He looked awesome. He yeah. looked awesome. But right. he was just the guy. But and the, the thing suit. is, too, I think what was hard is, like, the, there was the whole buildup of, like, oh, how did you survive? And then they, they pretty much solved that in the first episode. So it's kind of like, oh, okay, like, I'm satisfied now, you know? Like, I don't really need oh, just, like, the rest of the Oh, just, like, launch out of the Sarlacc pit? Like, does he actually survive Well, no, no it just shows or? him, like, fight. Yeah, it shows him, like, fight out of it or whatever. And so, but it's anyways. Dumb. It's so So dumb. it's okay. And then what else did I watch? Uh, Here's us undoing a Ryan Johnson type mistake in Star Wars. It just didn't happen. <laughs> that is no way to treat a lightsaber. That is no respect. You need to respect this weapon. You threw it over your shoulder. I'm only doing what you did to me. So funny. So and funny. And then uh, I watched Sister Act. That was a pretty good, I don't know, 90s Sister Act? Maybe? Oh, with Whippy Goldberg? Yeah. Dude, those, those things are, are hilarious. That was an entertaining dude. movie. It was funny. Dude, Elden Jordan, those were his favorite movies. Like, oh, really? like sister, yeah, he's like, his dream was to <laughs> as a nun and be in, in the <laughs> choir with Whippy Goldberg. Like, that would be his dream come true. That's so, hilarious. So funny, dude. Love you, Elden. And then I saw the new West Side Story. That was a good. What'd you think? Was it good? I thought it was. Ansel Elgort, can he sing? Oh, yeah. No, he was really, really good. I know you could kind of dance as a quirky white kid, you know, like in uh, Baby Driver, yeah. Ansel Elgort, but I didn't know he could sing, so. Yeah, I think the singing's really good. Like, I don't know, a lot of people complained that, like, it was pretty different than the first, or the original movie. But we want I... to live in America. Did they get away with that song? <laughs> they had that song? Oh, yeah, they did, yeah. Oh, good. Because I like that, the like, themes. Yeah, they said that there was a lot of, like, the songs were in different settings, or that, like, they switched things around that came at different times or something. But overall, it was, like, the same story. Like, but... cool boy, yeah. easy boy. <laughs> Change that song. <laughs> when you're a jet, you're a jet for life. There's no way you watch it and you're like, these singing and dancing buffoons <laughs> are like in a hardened gang like they murder people but they also sing together after school <laughs> like, i love that idea like yeah. dude it's freaking <laughs> killers just got really in touch with their feminine but side. overall the production was really really well done so really good actors good. i think it was put together really really well so mom's coming to visit and i'm like i guess maybe we'll go to the movies and like it's between that or like 
watching Spider-Man again, which I probably would go see Spider-Man no, before I saw West Side. Don't. don't see Spider-Man again? Don't watch, don't see the new Spider-Man again. It's a one-time watch, honestly. Really? Seeing Did it you second, watch Spider-Man yeah, No Way Home the second time? I watched it the second time with Lisa's family, and like, there's so much buildup to anticipated stuff that you don't know the first watch. That Are you sure it's not it just the dad ruined out. it again for you, Grant? He's like, yeah, you wasted more like, of yeah. my time. <laughs> yeah, what did he say, Grant? You said you watched the movie with the Lisa's What did he no, say? No, watched two movies. They didn't you like Mitchell's Hot versus Rod. the Machines. He <laughs> yeah, no, Hot Rod. They didn't like Hot Rod, and they didn't like Mitchell's versus the Machines, Ty. Mitchell's what? versus the Machines? How could you not like that? Grant, you're two. Uh, you're not Owen him, too? but the fa- her family, I thought you said. Yeah, you said oh. you showed them, and they were like, eh. Oh, you I said think... they didn't laugh. Uh, yeah, maybe, Ali- like, maybe Elise showed them, and then they were like, eh, it's okay. It's okay. And you're like, it's okay, yeah. Or no, I showed my my roommates or something but anyway oh. uh, i understand sometimes you're like with the wrong crowd and you're like right. dude like uh i'll never live it down i showed my friends good burger and i'm like this is a part of who i am right. and like this is the stupidest thing i've ever seen. <laughs> i'm like i know it's stupid but i'm I like know. could you at yeah. least appreciate it because i love well, it and, and that's what that was really like, so funny it's like, like i i literally had so much empathy for jordan i was like i don't know how he keeps showing people movies <laughs> like i would get so <laughs> disappointed because everyone's just like yeah it was okay and i'm like that's the best thing Jordan ever. Jordan is so in his convictions he's like they're wrong they're just wrong <laughs> I'm right no there's certain people I cannot watch movies with I can't watch right, movies with right. Tyler he mm-hmm. rags so hard on it. like we watched Heat he was on his phone the whole time and at the end he's like eh wasn't that great and I was like you watch nothing do not talk to me <laughs> yeah, ever again geez. you ain't nothing <laughs> <laughs> and I, I gotta know the person and what they like because right, then I can right. like gauge like I, I have a friend that likes tons of foreign films so we just watch mm-hmm. tons of great well and that's what was know. so funny because like Elise's family was like yeah we love like Na- Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre and I was like oh this is like right up your alley <laughs> and they were just like it was me and Elise laughing the whole time I was like okay whatever yeah yeah i can hear that so like i laugh at the muppets and a lot of people think they're corny and i'm like i know they're corny <laughs> oh yeah me and time ah, are laughing so funny at that it's new funny. muppets most wanted and then the, yeah. it, you tried showing maddie's family and they're just like well no yeah like i had told them i was like i love the muppets most wanted it was hilarious and they're like oh we watched it we didn't like it at all and i'm like what it, well it's me. just those babies ty Meh, come on guys <laughs> <laughs> Babies with the dark, deep voices. Oh my gosh, so funny, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so funny, dude. So I watched a weird indie movie called Frank. This is a movie starring Donham Gleason and Michael Fassbender and Maggie Gyllenhaal. Is it good? I, I, I was so excited to watch it. It's it's one of the most original movies I've ever seen. Yes. It's right up there with Swiss Army Man, but it's not. It's very grounded, and yet it is very quirky. It's like. What's a good movie to compare and it to? I it reminds so me impressed. of The Garden State meets, like, About Time. Only because it's Donham Gleason. That's probably why I think about I got that. mad respect that he never takes off that mask. Because that's what I've heard. I don't know if he does. He probably does. Michael Fe- Yeah, well, I know it's the actor Michael Fesbender. I actually haven't finished it. I started the first 40 minutes, and I have, like, oh. 30 minutes left to finish it. But Maybe he'll pull but, a Mandalorian, uh, finish- and he's like, I need to take off this I mask. I need to take it off the mask, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's really weird. It's about this, like, weird band that plays, like, weird alternative music. And, yeah, this band member has like this giant head like cartoon mascot looking head and he never takes it off and they're like in this weird band and Don Gleason is like a nobody and he ends up joining this band because he can play the keyboard and it's kind of fun it's and like uh, it's got the guy from about time I like him he's yeah Don Gleason yeah oh that's his name Don, sorry yeah, Don Gleason yeah <laughs> yeah I know, I know eventually you hit your, your star hits a status where you're like I'm gonna start remembering your name because I, I deserve to remember your name but Jordan's not quite there yet uh, well he's 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 a lot of good stuff so I don't know why it's Huxley just, in Star Wars in Star the, Wars he was just kind of yeah. like a he was like, oh, he's a buffoon. It's ridiculous yeah. what they did with that character. Made him a spy in the end. I'm like, oh. And again, that was actually the most redeeming thing about him because I'm like, oh, like, but he was still a punching bag and he was a double agent this whole time. He was literally first in command and he was the one giving that crazy speech at the beginning of Rogue One. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Well, and, make sense. and he was That's great in Ex Machina. He was great in Black Mirror. Great in Ex like, Machina. Yeah, yeah, I like him. But... Great in About Time. So anyway, yeah. that's now now why he sits in the catalog of remembered named actors. We should talk about that. There are a lot of actors that are like, hey, he's the one guy from that one thing because I don't care to know his name. But that one performance he does makes me laugh. He's like, that guy. Okay. Wayne Knight for the longest time was the fat guy from Jurassic Park. Like I for the longest I time. Now I know him. his name because he makes me laugh and <laughs> his voice is so iconic and I love him in Rat Race. He's so funny. I love race. well and he's he's so good. It, and... It's a heart. It's been sitting in that cool for hours. It needs fresh air. And then they like <laughs> open it up and they're looking at it and they like. 
when they hit this bump, the heart falls on the floor of the car. It's like, uh, like, oh my gosh, and it's rolling around. He's like, I found it. He's like, what is that? It's a nickel. It's like stuck wedged inside the heart. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Third Rock from the Sun. He's a cop in that. He's so oh funny. Oh my gosh, he was in Seinfeld like a lot. He's like yeah. the uh, Newman, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he, he Wayne Knight, dude, like funniest voice, like his iconic voice. He was in Star, uh, Toy Story Two. He's the fat. Uh, Guy that steals Woody. I love all that, the way dude. to work on a Saturday. All the oh, way to work. I gotta go all the way to work. All the other side of town. <laughs> he drives across the, the street. street. And he's there. Oh my gosh, dude. It's so funny, dude. I love it. He's just like, <laughs> oh, he's like, ah, it'll be all right. He's like, are those bite marks? Those holes in the side? He's like, oh my kidding. They're gonna see this heart. They're gonna put it in a, a sorry <laughs> second. He's gonna go. <laughs> 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 he's got this separate heart. And then he's like, what we have to do is find a drifter, kill him, take his. <laughs> oh my gosh it's so funny dude some weirdo after uh watch frank like i said i recommend it to those that like weird movies had one part of yes man in there too i don't know why and it reminded me of the movie yesterday it's like all those movies yeah it's a quirky quirky indie film you know weird music weird Which, actors. thank you for recommending kings of summer loved it i'm glad yeah it's a great coming of age movie i love that one and it sticks out from the rest like i almost thought it'd be like by the books coming of age and it has all the beats but it's like it much a, funnier so many cast members i was like holy yes. cow yes i was like dude they had like whoever's pulling the straight i think nick overman is such a cool guy i feel like if they're like oh nick nick's gonna be in it. oh i'm there dude like seriously like everyone's just drawn to him and again his real life wife tammy was the the she the was in it too the, she was yeah she was the they had chloe from 24 yep yeah you get all those, they had the guy characters. from that what's that that tv show you like with the program computer programmers silicon valley silicon valley yep yeah the cop swartz dicks or i can't even middle ditch or whatever his name is aaron <laughs> middle ditch i think is his name. <laughs> a dick's ditch i don't no, know <laughs> it's middle ditch it's a weird I, I don't know i know i sound crazy it's uh aaron he's got a weird name anyway look it up um, <laughs> now you got me one in middle ditch. I don't know. Swartz ditch. Swar uh, uh, Schwarzenegger, <laughs> I think it was. So, um, yeah, after that, uh, I was Cobra Kai season four. I already talked about that last time. And uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing... Um, the Coen Brothers movie. The Coen Brothers film, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And then... Um, and the Batman. I wrote these down. That's I wrote so down some Batman. movies I wanted to see. There was a movie called Made. It came out. Um, it looked really interesting. It was like... Um, I don't know. It was recommended from Red Letter Media. It's another YouTubers that I like to watch. They like review movies and stuff. And they're from Wisconsin. Shout out to Wisconsinites. Um, and it, and they also re recommended a movie called Saint Maud. It looked really interesting. Kind of remember yeah, the movie. Yeah, I added Saint. that to my bucket list because I just listened to them talk about it. Did you? Yeah. 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 Their recap of the movies this year, and I was like, Saint Maud looks like right up my alley. It's like an indie film where there might be an aspect of like uh, supernatural occurrences, but this girl like took a sign that like God exists in her life, and so she needs to. Like, I like their joke. They're like religiously. We can't talk about it until you add it to your list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was really funny, dude. They're great, dude. They remind me so much of us. Like, I'm like, dude, we we. Well, could sometimes totally do. I notice you can't. You've been taking some of their jokes. I'm like, oh. I don't take anyone's jokes, and if I do, it's out of respect. So. <laughs> <laughs> And if I think it's going to be funnier and serve a purpose. Well, I mean, like, like uh, what you were talking about theaters being disgusting and gross, and I was listening to them. I'm like, oh, this is so tight listening to them. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, you should hear their stuff. Like, he – I honestly feel like we should have him on the show. I, I'll We should reach out to him and be like, we just love talking about movies. I That's would love it. to have like, him and YMS yeah. on our show at least once. We, we should. We should be like, hey, we've had famous people like Jared Power on, so <laughs> – <laughs> like, you know, kind of a big deal, uh, you know, <laughs> us and uh, our family listens to the podcast so far. So, uh, but again, it's, it's about, it's about the enjoyment we get from it, dude. Like we are not doing this reviewership. So when I always tell you to subscribe, it's only if you feel like there's someone in your life that could listen to this and be uplifted, even though we rag on people, we make offensive <laughs> jokes and, you know, we talk about movies that aren't even all that uplifting, but feel free to share this podcast. Or aren't too, all you that know, hidden. Your friends and your family, push it on all your Matrix, friends. Matrix, thank you for helping me find this hidden movie. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I love our commenters, dude. They're going so salty all of a sudden. Oh, The Matrix? Wow, thanks for this hidden movie gem. Who would ever heard of The Matrix? <laughs> Good on you, dude. I love it. I love the saltiness, dude. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I met, like, my grandma doesn't know what The Matrix is. Or how about, how about pretty much all the comments? Hey, where's the movie? Hey, where's the movie, dude? 
I'm, I'm looking for the mo- bootleg copy of the movie. <laughs> and then we say in the very beginning, like, welcome to Future Hidden Movie Gems podcast. Like, I say it every episode. <laughs> At the very beginning, welcome to the podcast. And they're like, where's the movie yet? <laughs> I think our only listener stopped listening because Ty called her out. <laughs> I know. We had a comment and I, I made fun of her because uh, they recommended a movie like uh, The Devil Inside or whatever it's called. The, the, the I saw devil. the devil. I saw the devil. Anyway. The devil inside so, me. So looking forward to seeing uh, St. Mod, and I also wanted to see uh, I Care a Lot, which looked really interesting, and Lamb. So, I want to go see all those movies. Yeah, I just bought Lamb, Ty, so you can check it out. Yeah, although I'm more tepid about Lamb because it sounds like a messed up, it sounds like the lighthouse, basically. Yeah. Where goat a kid it has born with a lamb's head. I don't know. Just looks weird. Sounds weird. So, yeah. But, not, but my curiosity has been piqued, and now I want to go see it. So, I just saw the new Scream movie. It was uh, okay. Uh, I don't know how to. Describe. Where does it rank on the screen? What, what's the best screen movie? If oh, it's obviously screen the one. first one, and then okay. And this then what's one the was literally just a rip off of it. I, I. So yeah. the second screen would have to be the TV series, season one and two, not season three. Skip yeah, it. But okay. season one and two, I said it goes movie. Season one and two, then the scary movies making fun of Scream, the scary movie one. <laughs> so, so the the one that Brian makes a makes joke about it, and then go back to Scream two probably. <laughs> what what's your favorite Lord of the Rings? Well, I like this parody of Lord of the Rings that makes fun of it, and then Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers. It's just really funny to hear you say that. Well, dude. and it, they gave some like it was like it reminded me of Matrix Resurrections. It was just being so meta, and it was like, oh, I'm getting a headache right now. I'm like, but. I gotta say, as meta as it was getting, it was like, here's the problem I'm faced with. I have to direct a movie that I don't want to direct with the studio going to make the movie with me or know, without just, me. And I'm I, upset. I, it's like, okay, then make your movie. It. Like, you literally yeah. spent the whole time setting up this world where it's like, oh, Neo is in the same predicament that I'm in. Feel bad for me. It's like, you're still raking in millions of dollars. Am I not? <laughs> am I correct? She's like, that? oh, boo. I can only feel me. bad for you for so long. Make a gosh dang good movie. Or she should have. She should have been sitting in the chair, like, as Keanu Reeves and them just throwing money at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like don't uh, you feel bad for me oh uh, my gosh you're being bathed in money yeah it's like i feel so bad for you as she's wiping her tears with the money uh. <laughs> <laughs> my so life is so hard I know. it's like oh they my should gosh. have had like starving kids outside of her door too and going like uh like, dude give me a chance dude i don't know how i i sign up for a chance <laughs> to direct a movie but i i would suck at it I probably wouldn't do as <laughs> good of a job but at least i wouldn't be sitting around complaining about how bad my life is and like Let's try to make a kick a movie. Ty, you know what? She should have been in front of like starving kids in Africa, just crying like, "Oh, poor me!" <laughs> As she's eating food in front of them, and they're like, uh. "Being catered to, yeah, she's got caterers. <laughs> this is so hard. I didn't even want to be here." Them to her on a silver platter, she's like, uh. <laughs> "Using as a footrest." I don't know. Maybe, maybe Lana is really nice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what else have you seen? You seen anything else? I'm looking forward to a ton of stuff you were talking about, like the Coen yep. Brothers movie. Robert Eagers. Yes. So excited. I put other movies on here, like A Most Violent Year. I wanted to see that one. Killer Joe, Personal Shopper. I started Killer Joe. It's pretty boring, but... Really? I wanted to watch King of California. Did you watch Don't Look Up, Ty? I thought you would Not be... yet. I was thinking about it. I'm, like, torn because part of me wants to watch it. Part uh, of me thinks it's said what I need to say about it. it... Yeah. I mean, Jared said it best if you listen to his video, so... I know, I was actually going to let, watch his video, but I debated whether or not I should watch it first before I like, have him give it's me my just, opinion. It's such a bummer, because uh, the guy who made it... Have you seen Vice? It's the same thing. Just... I haven't seen Vice, but I did watch... Uh, it's... Um... The housing one we talked about on the podcast. Yeah, so that right? was so good, but at least he kept it more about. I mean, the it people, was, the the relationships yeah. to each yes. other, like the you yes. know. This is Ryan like Gosling's performance. This is Amazing. like it's funny and it's clever, but it's just it bashes conservatives tie so freaking hard. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio looks at the screen and goes, "Are you effing? You're stupid!" And he's like yelling at conservatives. <laughs> how they are and i'm like are you kidding me like all he's doing is creating a bigger divide that's all congratulations Dude, leonardo dicaprio is gonna save the planet from global warming he's gonna save <laughs> the polar bears at the ice caps okay with with his 20 year old wife he's going to do it he's going to save the planet <laughs> with his younger than my my daughter wife dude it's amazing i will say everybody this has been future hidden movie gems uh we love you guys tune in future movies at gmail.com leave us an email tell us a movie you'd like us to review leave us a comment five stars check us out on spotify instagram patreon all the fun things 
Yeah, we've yeah, had we two amazing recommendations. That I saw yeah, the devil so far, the beast, and I saw and the, the devil. beast. Great recommendations, and we've watched every single recommendation we've had on the podcast. Uh, we, we might haven't, make fun we ha- of you for the recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> we might we might call you out and make you feel uncomfortable about your recommendation to us. But recommend a movie to us. We'll check it out and uh, leave us a comment. We'll always refer to your comments here, and we can keep you anonymous. Or feel free to you know say hey, give a shout out to me and my channel or whatever. And if it's more popular than ours and has more viewers, you certainly won't get a shout out. But if it's less popular than ours, <laughs> we're not worried about losing viewership and we see your content and be like yeah we'll be happy to give you a shout out because uh looks like you need all the help you can get weirdo so everybody this has been future hidden movie gems uh peace bye see ya. you must survive you must survive